Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brooks? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Bryant? Here. Mr. Chaussey? Here. Mr. DeFrancesco? Here. Mr. Johnston? Here. Ms. Lugo? Here. Ms. Tyson Wright? Here. Mr. Velasque? Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. And motion and a second. All in favor will say aye. 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 Uh, we get some presentations. Yep. So now we have student representative address, uh, Cambridge Springs representative, Audrey Bolt. Good evening. My name is Audrey Bullock, editor in chief of CSH's newspaper, The Pitchfork, and I will be updating you on what is happening at Cambridge Springs. Starting off with the elementary school. Grade one readers at Cambridge Elementary have just started their word detectives unit. The first graders will revisit the reading strategy word that they know and build on that foundation to tackle more sophisticated texts and books. First grade teachers are implementing guided reading, independent reading, and small group strategy lessons as they strategically respond to student needs and move them along the continuum. Mrs. Blakesley, Mrs. Leandro, and Mrs. Vanderella collaborate as a grade one team to plan this unit and students are excited to be word detectives as they continue to learn specific strategies and apply their sleuthing skills for tackling hard words and hard parts of books. CSES and Be Proud, Be Blue incentives are going strong. Adults in the building are always on the lookout for students following as well as going above and beyond expectations. Students of the month were recently celebrated during a special breakfast with their homeroom teachers and True Blue certificate earners are celebrated weekly and posted to Cambridge's school story on Dojo. There is a weekly drawing of blue slip recipients, and the winners will receive an in-house 3D printed Blue Devil bag tag. Finally, this month, students have enjoyed participating each Friday in the Turkey Toss Fund if their name is drawn from, from their blue slip collection. CSES continues to appreciate incredible community support. Cambridge Kiwanis and the Fire Department partnered and sponsored a Halloween parade that was enjoyed by students and their families. Active Aging is partnering with first graders, and the REC recently awarded several classroom monetary donations, enabling teachers to purchase supplies and special project items for student use. Local women's Gam Sakma and Kiwanis clubs have recently distributed applications for holiday assistance, and their extensive volunteerism and support of our families is always greatly appreciated. Recently, third grade Blue Devils performed a puppet show for an, an, an enthusiastic enthusiastic audience of kindergartners as part of their music class. Currently there are 143 fourth, fifth, and sixth graders taking advantage of elective music opportunities through participation in chorus and instrumental lessons. Finally in music news, mark your calendars for the Cambridge Springs Winter Chorus Concert on Tuesday, December 19th at 7 p.m. Now for news from the high school. This year's Red Ribbon Week theme was Be Kind to Your Mind, Live Drug Free. This theme is a reminder that by staying away from drugs, you are valuing yourself, your friends, your family, your community, and your future. By making healthy choices and staying drug free, you are more likely to achieve your goals. Nine students from our yearbook and journalism class traveled to Penn State Barron to compete in the regional competition round for the PSPA journalism contests. They competed in several different categories, such as editorial writing, literary magazine art, caption writing, and more. We wish these students luck in making it to the state round. On the same day, STEM students traveled to Barron to participate in Women's Engineering Day. Students participated in various projects and heard from speakers, such as a woman who works for SpaceX. This week, we are raising awareness for Children's Grief, Grief Awareness Week, and students were able to donate money to the Caring Place in exchange to wear a hat on Tuesday and Wednesday. Today, today was Wear Blue for Grief, and tomorrow is Wear Red for Homeless Education. Thank you to everyone who donated and was participating this week. Our volleyball team made it to the semifinals round before losing to Cockerton. Congratulations to Brooke Eldred and Audrey Bullock for achieving second team all district. And congratulations to everyone on their wonderful season. Our cross country runners participated in the D10 cross country championships in Titusville, where six runners ran personal records. 
Congratulations to all of our, runner, our runners for your outstanding effort this season. Our football team has advanced to the finals, which will be held Saturday against Lakeview at 7 p.m. at Meadville. Best of luck to the Blue Devils. We know you will bring CSHS pride. Thank you for your time. I look forward to updating you next month on what is happening at Cambridge Springs. Thank you, Ms. Bullock. Uh, Sagertown High School representative. <coughs> Hello, my name is Lorin or Zorian Edwards, and I am the Editor-in-Chief of Segertown High School's Panther Press. I am here to update you on what is happening at Segertown High School. The career play, the career, wow. The career fair took place at Segertown on October 20, on October 20th. About 15 colleges total participated. We would like to thank all of the colleges who attended to give our students this wonderful opportunity. The Panther Press staff joined with the Pitchfork to attend PSPA's regional journalism competition held at Penn State Barron on November 3rd. Each student competed in their own category and attended seminars given by active journalists. We will let you know if we have any state qualifiers at a later date. Good luck, journalists. The blood drive took place at Segertown on October 24th. There were at least 35 students and staff who signed up to donate. Out of that, 28 people total donated blood. Thank you to the Student Council for hosting, for hosting this blood drive and to all the students and staff who donated. Segertown High School is currently hosting a blood, not a blood drive, sorry, a food drive. Also thanks to the Student Council for hosting this event. A group of Segertown students went on a women in engineering field trip to Penn State Barron on November 3rd. Here they spoke with like-minded students, were given a lesson from Trivium about precise directions, and created ideas for aluminum packaging. Five Segertown students traveled to Thiel College to see Senator Michelle Brooks on November 8th. They also participated by splitting off into different communities and discussing bills and amendments throughout the day. The first grading quarter ended, and we would like to thank our students for their hard work and wish them good luck moving forward. Uh, Cross-country runner Cameron Herrickle went to states on November 4th. She placed 46th overall. Congratulations, Cameron. We had one student total from Segertown High School work the polls on election day. Uh, this student was Zorian Edwards. Uh, congratulations to them. Um, hold on. This one was not on the paper, so I have to read off my phone for a moment. Or not, my phone is not working. <laughs> uh, today was Children's Grief Awareness Day. We had a hat and pajama day. Um, everyone who showed up to school wearing a hat or pajamas had to pay $1 to help endorse the caring place in Erie. The Panther Press has been posting web posts online. You can find them on our website. The first literary issue of the Panther Press will be released on November 21st alongside our Thanksgiving podcast. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to updating you next month. In the meantime, follow us at the Panther Press SHS. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have our PA, PAEA representative address, Ms. Debbie Miller. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Debbie Miller, and I represent my admirable colleagues of the Pencrest Area Education Association. I want to begin, as I often do, by reminding you of what is good in Pencrest. First, a thank you to the teachers who wrote proposals and received grants for enhancing educational opportunities for our students. Also, congratulations to the students from Cambridge Springs High School for hosting our proud veterans bre breakfast last week. It was inspiring to see the veterans and to see the true happiness on their faces as they were honored and served by the students and the staff of Cambridge Springs High School. Congratulations also to the other fall activities like band, golf, cross country, and football. A special shout out to my beloved Blue Devils who will vie for the District 10 championship this weekend. Also, congratulations to Maplewood, Sagertown, and Cambridge Springs girls volleyball teams for outstanding seasons. Cambridge advancing in districts, Sagertown playing for the District 10 championship, and Maplewood District 10 champs and advancing to the final four. 
All three programs are led by teacher coaches and community members, proving that we have quality, distinct programs in all three schools. So what is my point? I want you to realize the achievements that happen at all three schools, schools which are the center of all three communities. Any attempt to alter that would be detrimental to the unique spirit of each. And let's be honest, it would most assuredly leave out some students. In small schools with small classes, students are engaged and involved. They are known, not just by their classmates and teachers, but by their communities. So this month, when you look at the data, remember there are real students and families in each attendance area impacted by your decisions. They're not just a number on a data graph with a cost attached to them. They're a real student with learning experiences that are foundational for their future and the future of our communities. What is the price tag for our future? Obviously, it is not the thing that we can afford to secure at the discount rate, or worse yet, never increase our investment. I'm not an economist, economist, sorry, but I am pretty sure that you don't get a greater yield when you don't increase your investment. Our students and our communities are worth it. The second part of my point is that you also have three distinct faculties, each putting forth their best efforts for the school and the community that they each love. But something has happened at this level to erode those feelings. At school, when I walk down the hall and mention the game or the show to our musicians or our athletes, I know that they care about their school and they value the backing of their teachers. Why is it then that when we come to the board level, the unity wanes, or worse, it is entirely absent? Why are we made to feel like we should be ashamed of wanting valued or recognized for the job we do? Why are we attacked from a microphone, or even worse, from behind a keyboard, when we have repeatedly asked to enter dialogue to improve our schools? What does it say when members of this board make statements without any proof or any chance for a reply? What does it say when a much loved veteran teacher with 28 years of experience and a home in our community opts to go elsewhere to complete their career? What does it say if since 2019 we have had 16 teachers leave Pencrest for other places and not due to retirement? And worse yet, did anyone ask them why they were leaving? The answer is simple. Some of you don't care. Some don't have the time nor the concern to find out what the real story is. Or are you following the direction of someone else who is leading your thinking? Have you been told your opinion or your stance without even doing your own due diligence to understand? Again, I wonder, do you even care? So to that I say, prove me wrong. Even if you are a lame duck, whatever that phrase means, you still have some days left to show a genuine desire to leave this district better than now, to show an honest attempt at reaching a fair settlement with our teachers, to show that you do care about the district you were elected or appointed to serve. Please, I beg of you, for probably the 10th or 11th month in a row, Come to our schools, talk to us, find out what's happening so that you can make the best decisions in your position. Thank you. We have no registered citizens. Um, Non-registered citizens can speak for up to two minutes if there are any. Please, please state your name and township for residence. Uh, Carla Brown. I live in Cambridge Springs. My kids attend Sagertown. Uh, I had two questions more than like, any kind of specific statement. Um, the first one, uh, the on the agenda for the cafeteria negative lunch balances, um, it says in the agenda that it was for the 21-22 school year. And 
I thought that during that school year, lunches and breakfasts were free. So I'm curious as to why there's a balance of almost $3,000 that the board is trying to take from the general fund to put in the cafeteria fund. I'm curious about that. And um, the second one is of the approval for the e-discovery. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that at the Monday meeting, um, and it was explained to me that the use for the e-discovery would be at the discretion of the district or the superintendent. Um, however, the language, when you look at it, is specifically for the law firm. So I would just like to have a, a little bit of clarification on that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lorette Orzorian Edwards and I am a senior at Sagertown High School. I just wanted to say that this might be the last night for some of you up here as a board member. And I'd like to thank you guys so much for being here, for doing the best for your students, and for listening to us. And for others who remain on the board, I urge you to do what's best for the students, listen to the community, and do your best. Thank you. Anybody else? No, we can go ahead with the agenda. I'd like to speak. Somebody on the big tech? Yep. Yep. I was a student at Pancrest, graduated May 1, 1982. I taught five years in North Carolina, and then I finished my career in Sagertown Elementary, teaching 31 years. I don't, I don't consider myself a know-it-all professional or anything, but I do know this, kids matter. And I know for a fact some of you are sitting on that board that could care less about a kid. So if you're on that board and you don't care about kids and what they have to do and what there is for them, then you need to step down. If you're there because you don't want your personal taxes to go up, you need to step down. This is about kids. I have grandsons going through the school district now. My daughters went through the school district. I had nothing but great things to say about Pencrest about 15 years ago. All of a sudden that changed. We need to stop fighting amongst ourselves. We need to start working together. I don't care who you voted for or what your stance was, you need to make it about the kids. That's what it's about. It's not about our egos. It's not about our pocketbooks. It's about those children. As a coach, and I've coached for over 40 years, I actually coached Mr. Brooks there. He was very tough, by the way, so if I were you, I'd be careful what you say to him. <laughs> if you have a team that there is dissension, the team will fail. As a team, Every member has to try to work together. And I'm asking this new board, when they step together, no matter what side of the aisle you stand for, you make sure you get together and stand for those kids. Thank you. Anybody else? Is this happening? safe for me to say that we can continue with the agenda? Let's continue with the agenda. Item 6 for the education report. Uh, item 6A is informational. It's the first round of fall planning survey data that was in your board packet uh, and attached to the agenda as well as it will be posted to the district website. Um, item 6B, resolve that the Pancrest School Board of Directors approve the student travel as listed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments, questions? The one in favor say aye. Aye. Item 6C, recommended action, resolved that the Pencrest School Board of School Directors approve the attached agreement for Delaware County Intermediate Unit Managed Security Services Agreement. So moved. Second. 
I have a motion and second. Any comments, questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 6D, recommended action, resolved with Ben Crest, Board of School Directors, approve the Indiana University of Pennsylvania student teacher for the spring of 2024. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Questions, comments? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. 6E, recommended action, resolved that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the list of resources and materials in accordance with policy 109 as listed. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. No comments? Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. 6F, recommended action, resolved that Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the college and career fair, fair to be held in Cambridge Springs High School on 215.24 in accordance with policy 109. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions, comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. 6G recommended action resolved that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the following resources and materials in accordance with policy 109. Speakers. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Comments, questions? If not, all in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Motion is approved. Facilities, item 7A, recommended action, resolved that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the listed contracted student transportation drivers. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Questions, comments? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, I do have a, a comment not to do with transportation, though. Uh, it's not with this, but I had sent an email out to a couple of board members, David Bolesky, or I'm sorry, Dave Dixon and Ken Newman, about an incident that happened in Titusville, and unfortunately I have not had a response from either person on what we're going to resolve this matter. Uh, and to keep it from happening anymore. We've had several instances where GG and C have dropped the ball when it comes to picking our students up. And I brought this up before, but it seems to keep falling on deaf ears. So uh, now that I'm back on the board, I'm going to be a complete jerk about this until I get some answers on what we're doing with GG and C. They have not been that great. We've had a lot of problems. And there again, as a board member, I think if I ask a question, I should get an answer. So, do I have any, or are we just going to sit there? I did ask for the transportation of the community to meet. I, I guess it did not, huh? The incident you referred to there, we were not charged for that trip for them going over or coming back. I agree with you. Uh, it was a situation where they went over and dropped them off, the second bus was to come back and pick them up, the second bus was late. So we had that conversation with them and we were not charged for that trip. But late to me is like five or ten minutes. An hour and a half is unacceptable. And, and this isn't the first time. I mean that being that late probably is. Right. Right. This this is becoming a continual thing with GGMC. I, I would say early on last year when we first started, we had we struggled, yes. We still um, are. I talked to a lot of coaches, a lot of parents. I, I, I get complaints all the time. People aren't making this up. Uh, it, I, I just, from now on, if you're asking a question by email by a board member, I think somebody deserves an answer. And we, I, I have to know that you're on top of this because an hour and a half for a group of students to be caught in Titusville, and thank God their coach got them some food and helped them out that way. But this is just unacceptable. I agree. Okay. <coughs> That's all I have. Number eight, financial report, 8A. Recommended action, resolve Pencrest Board of School Directors, approve the attached treasurer's report. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Questions? Comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 8B, recommended action. Resolve the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the payment of the attached disbursements as listed. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Comments? Questions? I have a comment. 
uh, on our solicitor. Just so this board is aware and the audience is aware, we have $55,000 budgeted for our solicitor for 23-24 uh, fiscal year, and we're already over halfway. Uh, we're over $28,000 we've already spent on solicitor this year, and uh, I hold this board accountable, but uh, we have to put a cap on this. We can't call our solicitor. When we agreed to have King, the, this law firm, they weren't going to be at every meeting. They were going to Zoom call. Last three months, they've been at every meeting. Uh, I guess, and that's on you guys. That's on us. But uh, we have to start capping our solicitor fees. You guys used to go after Watts about this. We're doing the same thing again. This is ridiculous to be at 26000 and our teachers can't get paper and we have to buy paper so i have a problem with that so it's something we need to discuss the new board needs to discuss this you know i've brought this up before uh mr brown one way to cut down expenses not to have a work, work session anymore, but it's up to the new board to decide what to do. But he doesn't have to be at both meetings. We, we, when we hired them, we said he wasn't going to be at both meetings. Now they're at both meetings. You talk to them throughout the week. Ken talks to them throughout the week. Other people talk. That's 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. It adds up. Didn't, did we not all agree on that when we hired them? Yeah. Thank you. So that's that's on you guys. I mean, I did not ask them to be here. That's up to we the, don't need them to be here. It's but, up to the new board. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Just so, yeah, just so it, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Just so I can have clarification, because I thought I was requested to be here this evening. I would have happily been here by Zoom. <laughs> oh no, it's um, not against so, you. No, no, I, I don't. But we want to make sure. Unless we're specifically asked, we're happy to participate by Zoom because as much as I enjoy the ride, it's um, a long ride. Huh? Just those <laughs> are so um, so well, just I, I just want to make the public aware. Transparency is going to be something we're going to push. I appreciate it. Just because I know you have a reorganizational right. meeting coming up, December seventh. Yes. So, which we do need a solicitor for that. Th that's fine. Yeah. And then, other than the reorganizational meeting, because um, I'll talk to my colleagues and let them know that we we'll participate by Zoom unless specifically asked to, to and as a board and nine new members or nine members we will have that discussion december 7th true thank you and we'll fill you in i'm just letting people know where we're at with budget everybody wants transparency so they're getting it. thank you you're welcome we have to vote on this motion we have to vote on this motion Board, yeah. It comes no. after discussion. Aye. 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 8C, recommended action, resolve Penn Crest Board of School Directors, approve the attached budget transfers. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Comments? <coughs> questions? One in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. 8D, recommended action, resolve the Penn Crest Board of School Directors approved to accept a donation of $800 from the Sagertown High School class of 1966 for Jim Max with the SHS logo on it. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions, comments? I'd say thank you to the class of 1966 for the Jim Max with the Sagertown logo on them. 1966 was a long time ago. I think Mr. Hanley was 10 or 12. <laughs> but thank you to the class of 1966. Yes, thank you very much. That's awesome. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. 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 AE, recommended action, resolve the Pancrest Board of School Directors approved to transfer funds from general fund to the cafeteria fund for 21-22. Negative student lunch balances in the amount of twenty-six eighty-five and eleven cents. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Comments? Questions? If I just could, all in favor, say aye. Well, I, I think you know we had a question about that, and I think it's fair that we answered that. 
uh, it wasn't free lunches during that time. Uh, and there just, it happens every year that there's students that, for whatever reason, it, it, every year we have to do this, except when there's free lunches like now. So, unfortunately, it, it just happens that way. So it was just free breakfast that year and not free lunch? Because that was still during COVID, so I thought- Well, it, they, were, they, they went off and on a couple of times there, so okay. I don't okay. remember exactly, Thank but- Thank you. That's what happened. Right. Any other comments from the board? And in the past, to the FYI, we've discussed it in detail. But it costs more to collect and try to reach out to people than it does to pay it off. Any other comments? Want to ever say aye? Aye. Motion approved. 8F, recommended action, resolved the Pencrest Board of School Directors approved to accept a donation to three Cambridge Springs Elementary School teachers from Northwestern REC as follows. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any comments? Questions? Thank you, Northwestern REC. Thank you very much. Any other comments? I want to favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Personnel report. Item 9A, recommend action resolve that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the following resignations as listed. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Item 9B, recommend action resolve that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the resignation of the following coaches as listed. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? Questions? If you're not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion approved. 9C, recommended action. Resolve the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the following coach hires as listed. So moved. Second. <clears throat> I have a motion and a second. Questions? Comments? If not, actually, you know what? Thank you to all the coaches that we are hiring. I see a lot of the same names, so thank you for your dedication to keep coming back for the kids. Appreciate it. Any comments? I want to be able to say aye. Aye. Nine D recommended action: Resolve Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the following support staff substitute. So moved. Second. Got yeah, a motion and a second. Any comments, questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. 9E, recommended action, resolve the Pencrest Board of School Directors, approved to appoint the following individuals for Article 19 extra compensatory positions in, accord in accordance with the current collective bargaining agreement. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 9F, recommended action. Resolve the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the following volunteers as listed. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Thank you to the volunteers for stepping up. We also appreciate that. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. 9G, recommended action. Resolve the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve one professional staff member to access a professional stiff bank, sick bank for the following number of days, up to 50. Sick bank, sorry. So moved. Second. <coughs> sorry, laughing. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. New business items. Item 10A, recommended action resolved that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve policy 808. So moved. Second. We have motion and a second. Comment? Question? Mm -hmm. Any favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. 10B, uh, e discovery, recommended action resolved that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the use of Brandon Harder for e-discovery to be used by the district's law firm. 
the member's cost would be three fifty, and then thirty five dollars per month. No motions. Yes. Motion that the recommendation dies. No motions. Recommended is die. Item 10C, recommended action. Resolve that the Pencrest Board of School Directors approve the attached option agreement for the Crawford County Career and Tech Center. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Questions? Comments? You, you guys good with this, Bob? We uh, <coughs> talked about it last night. Was right. clear, uh, uh, last night was a career meeting, and uh, they're still working on it. They're getting ready to make a, an offer. Okay. The asking price was eight hundred thousand, but they're right. They're but we're all uh, basically the, tonight's vote just gives them the okay to go forward with the five thousand uh, dollar fee to make the offer. But you're good with that. I just yeah. want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Turn it back over to you, Mr. DeFrancesco, item 11, Board of State Board Directors, new business. Uh, resolve that paid press Board of School Director approved to direct the administration to group the salaries posted on Pancrest's website in accordance with the, their assigned jobs. sure what this has to do with the education of our students. I'm kind of confused why posting salaries in certain orders. If we're going to post salaries, something that Mr. Bullock said the other night made great sense. If you're going to put it on there, put all the facts down. Here's a service, how much they, uh, their degrees, you know, you make, you're trying to, it sounds like you're villainizing our teachers. And instead of saying, hey, they, they have this much experience, they have this much involved, you know, why don't we do some positive things out of this? Understandably so, because if you're... Any other comments? What was that? From the board? <laughs> Any other comments from the board? I would agree with what Mr. Brown said. Um, if, we're, if we decide that we're going to group it, we need to group with... We need to group with um, what you do. It's just a salary that doesn't show the if you're a coach, how many sports you coach, if you're a, a clock keeper. So if the goal is to put all the information out there, then put it out there. Otherwise, I think what we have is fine, and I don't see why we need to add time and effort into just putting in a different use. It's in alphabetical order. If people don't know the alphabet, then we fill them as a district. Beyond that, I think if we want to do something, we put it all out there. Um, and like for me, posting this, with the amount of what, I, what I've seen recently is people are vilifying our teachers. They're saying this one's a Satanist, or they're saying these two are going, these two people are related, and the more information we have, the more we're putting our employees in danger of stalkers and also getting poached by other school districts. I will not vote for this. <coughs> Any other comments? The main reason this request was, was, was proposed to avoid any additional retinue request and sexual money and possibly future legal, legal problems. If, How many if we have this list in, the, on the, in accordance with the, the job assigned, you know, it's stay available. The public can go to the website and check it out. Instead of have a submit a right to no request specific, specifically for the group of uh, professors for uh, employees or individuals, they're there. That's it. I'd like to know how Any many other comments. I'd like to know how many right to no requests we've actually received on that because I'd also like to say putting it by. Uh, job assigned, that's not going to limit right to no request. Now it'll be the same thing. I was looking for Jim Smith's salary, and it's not an alphabetical order where I could find it, so it's by job assignment. 
that's just shifting the right to know request, not eliminating any if those are happening. Any other comments from other board members? If they're not, let's have, let's have a roll call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brooks? No. Mr. Brown? No. Mr. Bryant? Yes. Mr. Chaucey? No. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Ms. Lugo? No. Ms. Tyson Wright? No. Mr. Velasquez? Yes. Mr. DeFrancesco? Yes. Five, four, five no's. No's get it. The board met for executive session on October 24th, 2023 and November 13th and 16th for superintendent search, personnel, and negotiations. <coughs> Next, registered citizens comments. We have no registered citizens comments. Uh, are there any non-registered requests? Anybody? Once? Twice? Hearing done. Uh, board members remark, uh, uh, solicitor solicitor board. remarks. Solicitor remarks. Do you have anything for us? Nothing for public session, other than I hope everybody has a safe holiday over the Thanksgiving. Uh, Thank you. Cool. Board member remarks. Board members remarks. Mr. Brown, <clears throat> want to start? Sure. I'm going to keep mine short and sweet. Uh, Jeff's got a lot to say, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyhow. Another term ends and a new one begins next month for some of us. We will have nine, well, we'll have five <laughs> board members coming back. We have, uh, I got my numbers wrong, I'm so sorry. Anyhow, we have some new board members coming on and uh, looking forward to uh, working with everybody and I hope the new board, hope we can come together, we can sit as nine board members and we can work together with common goals. <laughs> Uh, but what I'm focused on tonight is uh, the board is losing a great member of Mr. Brooks tonight. <coughs> this is his last meeting. He has been a, def uh, been a definition of a board member who speaks to the entire community, promotes the district, and is always available when needed. He has taken a lot of heat from certain board members, all because of hate. That is a, pro a lesson to all of us. Hate consumes, usually doesn't get you anywhere. But being miserable, in it, uh, I'm sorry, integrity though is respected and appreciated. Mr. Brooks, he has shown that many times, and I will say I have not met too many people in this district, and I've talked to a lot of you, that has ever had anything bad to say about Mr. Brooks. So, Mr. Brooks, thank you for your years of dedication and service. It's been a pleasure, and I sure am going to miss having you over here giving me jabs all the time, keep me honest. Uh, so, sorry, uh, Mr. DeFrancesco, uh, you've been also on the board for a long time and, and you know, uh, you've been dedicated and I thank you for that. Uh, but you're at the time now, it's time to make memories with your family, your kids, your grandkids, and just be a positive impact on your family and, and that should be what's important now. Uh, now I want to congratulate Ms. Beers Mr. Benning, Mr. Chaucey, Mr. Custard, Mr. Stadborski, and Mr. Bleski. And I hope we can all set goals, be more transparent, work as a board of nine people to make Pencrest the best we can. The last two years have been, uh, has seen divisions, and now the next two should be about unity, accountability, transparency, and most importantly, the students. Now, as we end tonight, I want to thank all the teachers and staff for their support hard work in keeping this district safe and healthy for the students and our community. I'd like to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving and good luck on the upcoming deer season. By the way, pictures are always appreciated. I want to encourage more student involvement, attend meetings, ask questions, and encourage us to be better and more effective at commun uh, communicating with students and teachers. I saw a little quote today and I just figured I'd share this. When we hit a dead end, we don't give up, turn around. We find a new path towards our goals. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.
Thank you, Tim. I had a bunch of stuff that would ruin everything you said nice about me. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that out. Um, no. No, hey, Trisha, this one's for you. Um, I've been doing a lot of song lyrics, mostly to amuse myself, and they ask me what I do and who I do it for, and how I come up with this stuff up in the studio. All I want for my birthday. Anyway, um, thank you to everyone who served. Um, Veterans Day was just here, got a card for, from Gabby. Thank you very much. It's always great to get these gifts and these cards from students out there. And thank you to the teachers that encouraged us to do that. Um, just to clarify, I don't want to go out spreading misinformation. Mr. Hanley was not born before, 10 years before 1966. Mr. Turner might have been, but uh, <laughs> Mr. Hanley, I know he was, uh, he was a senior when I was a freshman, and he was always wonderful. Um, he's an amazing educator, like most of our teachers are, and when he was coaching me, he was in college volunteering, and it was the greatest team in Maplewood football history. Um, and I get, it gets better, the older and older I get, the better football player I was. Um, congratulations to Maplewood girls for becoming the District 10 volleyball champs, and Cambridge football, who we are playing for the District 10 title. Those teams decided to stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop. Winter sports season starting tomorrow, including the very first year we ever offered girls wrestling as an official PIAA sanctioned sport. This is one area that we as a district are ahead of the curve and are staying ahead of that curve. Um, so if you have a girl interested in wrestling, sign them up and let the bodies hit the floor. I fit a lot of the lyrics in here, I apologize. <laughs> now, I've had the time of my life. No, I never felt like this before. And yes, I swear it's the truth and I owe it all to all of you. Um, I'll slow down, I'm sorry. Um, for me, sitting on the school board has been a great chance to do my civic duty. I grew up valuing community involvement, building things together, doing your duty and building all of this together. I grew up here, I was in Lyona. Four generations of my family have gone to schools in this district. Before there was a Pencrest, we have Townville Eagles, and my grandparents went to one-room schoolhouses here. Um, I've been involved in this community my entire life. Segertown athletes have been made better and made worse due to my coaching of baseball, football, basketball, and wrestling since 2003. I was on the football and wrestling boosters, part of an amazing district-wide parent committee, and then got elected on the board. And when you get sworn into office, you take an oath stating you'll serve and advocate for public education in our community because our district administrators and teachers are, quote, the greatest instrument for preserving and perpetuating our representative democracy. The future welfare of this community, commonwealth, and nation depends on the quality of education we provide in public schools. In order to maintain a free and strong country, our civic obligation of the community, commonwealth, and nation is to maintain free and strong public schools in the United States of America without surrendering our responsibilities to any other person, group, or organization. And it goes on to say the public expects that our first and greatest priority is to provide equitable education opportunities for all youth, end quote. There's nothing in there about being a loyal party member or what religion you subscribe to or if you should legislate who loves who. Um, that's what this board's been about. Um, this election was about a lot of things. I'm trying to edit because Tim said nice things. Um, this election wasn't as much about showing up, doing your duty, building a strong foundation for our government, and it was not about who could be an unbiased election, elected official. Um, we need a better educated public here nationwide. Our employers demand it locally. Our children and their families deserve it. Those on fixed incomes need people educated and supporting them, not on public benefits. We are actively driving away anyone who doesn't think one specific way. Young entrepreneurs don't want to start a business here where members of any community feel threatened where people don't feel safe. Engineers don't want to move their families somewhere where we celebrate our small-mindedness and ignorance by electing zealots to the board. We need to fight against sexism and racism, not fight to preserve it or whitewash it or pretend we can ignore the law when it conflicts with our personal bigotry. We need to love our country and our community the way that we love our spouses and our children, not as a perfect thing without flaws, but love with all our heart and work to be more perfect. This isn't the place to say you're going to put anything over our students or the law of the land. We're elected officials serving our community. When I was in the Navy, I couldn't have said, I don't care what the law is, I'm going to do what I want to do. 
shows a lack of understanding what this job should be. This isn't the place to think that because, I was going to skip that part, but that you've given the prayer so many times at the county political dinner, you deserve to be elected. You need to be strong enough to stand up for all students, if, even if they happen to disagree with you and live a different lifestyle. If you can't put your biases aside, you shouldn't take the oath to be on this board. If you think that anything comes before your duty to our students while elected and on this board, you should ask yourself if you're able to do your duty without bias. If the answer is no, you can't, don't take the oath. This past election had tons of nonsense and perversion of what this job is. When people say you're not voting like a true Republican, I think that's great because that's not my duty. That person doesn't know what this job aspires to be. None of us should be loyal to any party. We should value the duties we were elected to do. If anyone feels they should serve and say they don't care if they're following the law, they're putting themselves above the Constitution, the community that they serve. We're not a community that they rule over, we're a community we serve. Even me, in all of my amazing arrogance, I don't believe I know more than the collective will of our nation's founders and the generations of Americans who came before me. It's unpatriotic to me and sickening to feel any of our personal morals outweigh the law of the land or the Constitution that supports all of those laws. You're not elected to be popular at the restaurant or anywhere you go. You're here to do your duty to your community, to our students, and our schools. My children mock me because I'm always the last one out of any school function because people feel heard when they speak to me and I like to know what's going on. And every one of those people I've voted at least once to make them mad because of the way I voted, because it was the right thing to do for all of us. My duties to this school district, not to my church, my friends, my dad, or my party. The next board's gonna be face a lot of challenges to rebuild the trust in our community and to move our district forward again. One of the challenges is going to be electing a new president. Um, I don't have a vote, but, and I would have said this before Tim said nice things, the logical choice is Tim Brown for me. Um, Tim has a knowledge that no one else has. He has children in the school. Um, he's in the Cambridge attendance area and loves this district and loves every student in here. The people that are out there that have said Tim's not a Republican or conservative, only can say that when they shift the de definition of those words from what they actually mean to changing it to a good Republican or conservative is someone that wouldn't question what other louder people are saying. I really cut this down, guys, I promise. Um, I'll skip that part. Um, I'll skip that part. Skip that part. This board's also been amazing. The work we've done here in Mark Duro, who happens to be in the audience, has not been totally dismantled. The U.S. News rankings that have us rising over 300 spots from when I took the board six years ago to 131st best district out of 500 in Pennsylvania are based on information and test scores that came under Mark's leadership. The board under his direction and what Jason Backus did before that helped us turn a corner. We went through COVID missing fewer in-person school days than any other district in our area. We were proactive looking for legal solutions to problems and being realistic about what we could and could not do. We succeeded where others failed. We were the first district in the state to say we'd have a girls wrestling team. Now finally, years later, the PIAA's caught up with us and our students are ready to go kick butt. Edit. We have used our funds to add more support for students and the mental health needs of our students has skyrocketed, not just due to COVID, but as our district drove away businesses and families, we're seeing more poverty issues with our students. We're doing a better job than what our board presents. And despite recent efforts, we have coordinated a lot of services that have saved kids' lives and helped prepare them for the future. Last page, I promise. <sighs> to get back to a different note and revisit some lyrics, with so much drama in the PSD, it's kind of hard being out here in the public. Being honest with what we're doing and why, and understanding this is a volunteer position. This should not be a huge part of our ego, but this is a duty that we do in addition to living our lives. I'm going to skip that lyric. Um, thank you to all those out there that deserve it. I'm still going to be around helping this community because that's what I've done and will always do. I appreciate the hundreds and hundreds of thank yous that I've received. My thank yous are my grandparents and my mother and her siblings and Clark, who all lived a life of public service to their community. Ms. Hassett, Mr. Wentworth, Mr. Vandal, <coughs> Mr. Bender, Coach Hager, Coach Hanley, 
not just well, just because he's here, and others who showed us the potential for greatness that this little backwoods country district, district has. Thank you to those who loved me during my time on the school board. I'm difficult to love under any circumstance, so I appreciate it. Um, and thank you, well, this one's funny, sorry. Um, thank you for so many on this board who made it so easy for me to seem much more intelligent than I am by them being. That wouldn't crack me up, I'm sorry. That was not being taken out. I'm sorry to all those I let down. I'm sorry to the students who didn't get the education they deserved because we worried about what the school board was doing. I'm sorry this district has been so unfair and vilified so many of our teachers. We exist to support public education, not blame educators for our failures as a board to be clear, consistent, and give the resources and guidance teachers need to succeed for our students to succeed. There's been over 3,000 students affected by the education provider laws on the board. They'll be the future of this district, and I sincerely hope none of them will remember this board, but I know they will all remember the teachers that had made a difference for them every day in school. And I'll, as always, do better. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank you, Fred, for serving the school board. Um, Fred was a true friend for me, uh, especially when it came to the budget. Uh, he knew a lot about the budget, and I didn't. Um, so thank you, Fred, for that. Amber was my go-to um, when I had problems. She listened. Um, I appreciate the long talks we had, and um, yeah, thank you for being there for me. Luigi is um, is a man I respect. He's got a strong heart uh, for the kids. I had a lot of conversations with Luigi. He's tough. He reminds me of my grandfather in Massachusetts, up in Lowell, which is, uh, had a very strong grandfather. But Luigi, in many conversations, I won't go into him, cares about the kids. He's brash, he's bold. He comes off in a certain way that might not be appealing to some people, but he appeals to me because I know he cares. Um, Jeff. Love you. He's the first guy that actually called me uh, when I got on the school board, and we had a good conversation. I appreciate his passion. Um, yeah, and you can tell Jeff has, um, he's going to be around. <laughs> he's going to be in the audience, and, and it's going to be awesome because we need the school board to be accountable. Was that everybody? I think so. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. The next thing I want to say is um, today was my mom's birthday and my dad mentioned to me, he goes, hey Mike, um, so you made it to the school board? I said, yeah, dad. So he goes, so you get no pay, you get beat up, and you got four years. So I said, um, yeah, dad. And as I pondered over that, I was thinking to myself, after the last five months of a lot of uh, audience participation, a lot of people um, not knowing me and, and not knowing how I feel about kids in general, and it's hard to take some of the comments and not say anything, <laughs> very hard. But I can honestly say this, when I got elected and my father said this to me, I was ready, I, I'm ready for these next four years. And for me, if you want to get to know me, I'm not a social media guy. If you really want to get to know me, please call me. We'll have a coffee. You get, I had a coffee, I forgot your name. Carl. With Carl. The first couple of weeks with Dolores, um, we had breakfast together. If you want to know me as a person, just, just send an email. We can meet somewhere. Not about school board stuff, obviously but just about getting to know me as a person. I have a 12-year-old that's at Maplewood. She's, she's my only biological father, uh, daughter, and I have two stepchildren. So I have uh, skin in the game, as you would call it, and I love the kids. I love the teachers, and I, I can't wait for this new board to uh, come about, set a vision, and, um, and start working with the students and especially the parents. I call all parents out there to get involved. We need you. 
We need you. We need you uh, to provide for your kids. And uh, we want to provide a good education for them, too. Thank you. Mine will be short and sweet because I'm still trying to get my voice back from last week's cold. Uh, I'd like to congratulate our athletes. Uh, there's been some phenomenal accomplishments and uh, just keep on going and pushing on and strive for your best. Uh, take a minute to thank Mr. Brooks, Mr. DeFrancesco, Mrs. Wright, Mr. Bryant. Thank you for your time serving with us. Appreciate all your support. Everybody had a different outlook at things and sometimes we get controversial but that's to be expected. Uh, we got uh, three uh, incumbents coming back, one and four new board members. Looking forward to getting together with them and uh, bringing unity to the table. Uh, <clears throat> I spent all day fighting fires, as did a lot of the departments. It's dry out there. Please be careful burning your leaves. Somebody lost a barn today, and I have no idea because I was too busy to listen to Scanner and the fire departments were just going bananas today with fires everywhere. Uh, like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, enjoy the time with your family. Uh, looks like we got some bad weather, so I'm praying for safe travels for folks that are going to be uh, coming and going. And uh, also for our deer hunters coming up, uh, please be safe out there and back to the one. Thank you. the one that got me um, started on the uh, Pinterest school board here. He uh, lots of conversations with him. I learned so much from him. Um, hours of talking to him. I appreciate all the knowledge that you've passed to me. And I'll continue to use that in the next two years. Um, and then uh, with the new board members coming, I'm excited for this. I really am. Um, I think we can all work together and uh, do what's best for the kids. We have a lot of work to to do this next year. Um, we have uh, contracts that we that we need to nail down. We have renovations to this very building that we need to get moving on as soon as possible. Um, and then the budget obviously coming up. Um, and then I also want to thank everyone that participated in the fall planning um, sessions. We held one here at Cambridge, then Maplewood and Sagertown was earlier this week. I was not able to make it to that one, but I, I thank you, thank everyone that came to those and gave insight. Um, it's it's going to be a community um, helping us in this as we plan for the renovation of Cambridge Springs that's much needed. Um, and then uh, just these next two years moving forward, um, I'll, I'll continue to do what I started out to do. Um, I, my Christian faith is um, part of who I am, um, and it is what our nation was founded on. It is in the Pledge of Allegiance. It's in the songs that we, that we sing. It is the foundation of this country. Um, it is um, very important. Noah Webster said that um, the Christian religion is the foundation to good education, and I truly believe that. You have to first establish a right and wrong. Morality is important to teach any subject. Um, so I'll continue to use that, um, and, and um, my faith in Christ uh, will be the center of every decision I make for the next two years. Well, I wish to uh, congratulate all of those who are elected for the next school board, and I'd like to thank this board for entrusting me with the opportunity to serve this year. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Luigi for his leadership in calling to the attention of the community concerns that we share with the status of our school district and attempts uh, by some within the system to advance wokeism and values that are inconsistent with those of the parents and the community. 
I want to thank Mr. Valesky for his work on policy to ensure pornographic materials were identified and removed from our libraries and classrooms. I'd like to thank Ms. Amber Wright for her leadership in helping the district establish a CLEP program that will help students complete some first year college classes, potentially saving thousands of dollars, and for encouraging students and encouraging students that they can perform at the college level. I also want to thank her for advancing an effort to identify specific areas of academic concern and establishing a working effort with teachers, administration, and the board to determine what changes might immediately help students excel. And while I agree with the comments that were made with uh, our, our legal expenses being too high and uh, not abiding by our original agreement, I also am grateful for the new law firm. Um, it's reassuring to know that they have our back. And with the revenue that's brought in by successful litigation, they've more than paid for legal costs for the entire year. Uh, I'd, I'd like to encourage the community and the board to stay focused on critical issues that will impact our community for decades to come. While the public was trusting the board to make good decisions, previous boards have approved an incredibly generous teacher's contract that has moved the district to a position of indebtedness that must be tackled. Our teachers have the most lucrative health care program of any business or government agency that I'm aware of. Our teacher's contract allows our teachers to pay only between one-third and one-fourth of the health care costs of those in our community who run Medicare. Further, the incredibly small deduction costs have caused the district to be in debt for millions of dollars. The unwillingness to accept greater responsibility for the skyrocketing health care costs will cause the district to continue to raise taxes as far as the eye can see. The union's unwillingness to accept responsibility for health care costs has been the single greatest reason why the teachers are working without a contract. The board offered teachers a substantial retroactive two-year financial increase if the union was willing to help tackle these health care costs. That offer wasn't even taken to the membership. So taxpayers, you better prepare to dig deep. Unless we take budget reform seriously, annual substantial tax increases are in our future. If 23000 per student isn't enough to educate a child for nine months, something is wrong. An additional strain on the budget has been the steady decline of students in Pancras, while the cost of non-instructional bureaucracy has grown. It seems obviously that we've got to toe the line on bureaucratic growth and more closely align expenses with student population and student performance. Finally, I want to acknowledge that in 40 years of government service, I have never worked on a more dysfunctional board, and the performance of this board this year, in my view, has been appalling. There is a lot of good work that could be done, but board members need to work collaboratively and in a more unified manner. From all measures, the election results should have been different. The union, liberal attorneys, and teachers att attempted to take over the board by promising a more lucrative contract and probably outspent their opponents 10 to 1. The Tribune ensured that letters to the editor from board members that would have provided vital, truthful information to the public were not printed. I thank God that the public took notice of disconcerting information about the school district and affirmed a desire to return to fundamental basics of education and public policy. Loud does not equate to the sentiment of our community. And we've had a lot of loud meetings. Um, I urge the public to stay engaged. There are those in the federal, state, and local bureaucracies that fully intend to continue pushing for woke ideologies and want to indoctrinate our children and youth. They appear to have been successful at many of our public colleges where many of our teachers are trained. The public must not place their full trust in these public institutions. Rather, parents and the community need to stay engaged and attend. We kicked the can for choosing the next superintendent, and now we're going to defer to professional educators to recommend who should be the next superintendent. But I might add, the way Dr. Smith was defamed and slandered some of the best candidates for superintendents might not be very interested in coming to Pencrest. I wish all of our new board members the very best. We have many challenges ahead. Well, now we 
appointed a new board, a board that has been elected, not appointed, so that there are no excuses or reasons why this new board should not be coming together in unity to really uh, dig deep and to serve the children of this community. And so I want to encourage, the one thing I wanted to encourage the new board is to communicate. Um, communicate to the public what you're doing for them. And you can do that at the end, at your, your uh, comments at the end, but, but let everyone know. I know you all want to know what each one of the members are doing for you. Um, it's, it's not bragging if you say what you're doing. Just let them know so that they know what each one of you are doing um, uh, on the new board. So I also want to thank the new board, a couple of the members, David and Michael and Brian, are going to take the baton on some of the initiatives I have started. And I really thank you for doing that. It uh, makes it really feel worthwhile that those are going to continue on and continue to serve the children. So um, I want to, all, to thank you all, too, for the opportunity to serve your children. A lot of the comments have already been made, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet. That's what everybody says, right? <laughs> um, veterans, thank you. Um, I do so much appreciate the, the service to our country, both um, actively serving and those that are, you know, no longer serving. Um, it is so much appreciated for our veterans here. Um, one of the things, the topics that has been close to my heart. And I know many of you have heard me speak about this a little bit when I have public comment, is uh, mental health of our students and of our community. And one of the things that um, I wanted to mention tonight, um, mental health first aid. A lot of us know you can get certified in CPR first aid, baby CPR, you know, adult CPR. You can get certified in mental health first aid too. Um, I have taken it, it is a, it's a great course. Um, I actually saw a post on Facebook that is being, this class is being offered in Nevo this Saturday from 8.30 to 2.30, six hours. Are our kids enough to invest your time? I went through it, it's a great program. Mental health first aid is not just, you know, it's for everybody, not just the kids, it's for your coworkers, your, your family members. We're all gonna be going into stressful family time for Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, family gatherings that, you know, they're afraid, right? So you can kind of pay attention to some of these things that are happening. Um, but the, the training is going to be offered by Dr. Linda Culbertson. She's a professor at Grove City College. Uh, it'll be at Oasis Church um, in Meville this Saturday. So if you are interested, do some research. Um, go get your certification. It's a six-hour course. You can be certified. Um, you can pay attention to those different triggers and things that are happening in our community with our kids, with your neighbors, with your loved ones. Um, just want to reiterate, um, our teachers are amazing. I do appreciate Debbie's comments. They are amazing. We, we have a great faculty and staff here. Um, they've poured into the lives of my children, and I am forever grateful. I mean, my oldest will graduate this, this coming spring, and he, he has his favorites. Oh, sorry if you're not his favorite, but he has his favorites. And he has had wonderful opportunities. My younger son, as well, has had great opportunities. And they, they are learning a lot. They've got great futures ahead of them. So thank you for all the time that you spend with them, because it really does make a difference. Um, it, it, they love coming to school, other than, you know, homework. But that's normal. So, but they do love coming to school. Um, so we do appreciate all the efforts that the teachers um, have been put into our kids, into our schools. Um, you are worth it, and we are hopefully going to get this contract resolved because I feel that you, you are just invaluable contribution to the school district. We need you here, and the support staff, and the aides, and everybody else that's you know contributing, the coaches, um, even our volunteers. We need you all. Um, I will reiterate, I think, what Jeff was saying. I think, um, sorry, Tim, got to throw you out there. I think Tim Brown is probably best qualified to be the president of our next board. So I'm just going to put that out there when we have our reorganization meeting in December. I'll probably um, jump up right now and say, I'm going to nominate Tim Brown. So just put that in your, you know, your noggin. Um, the last thing that I want to say, um, it, it kind of goes along with the teachers and, and the amazing work that they do with our students. Um, when I was in high school, 
I had an amazing speech teacher, and I always remember things. Um, when I graduated college, my minor was in speech communications based on you know, her recommendation, and it has come in handy because I've had to speak, speaking now. Um, so it, it really did come in handy. For my graduation, she gave me a little heart box, and it was like a trinket, and I still have it. It's, I know where it is. And inside of the box was a rolled up piece of paper with a poem on it. And it made an impact on me that I've, I've actually written it in some books that I've had. Um, I've shared it with people over, over you know, different times in my life. But I'm gonna read it to you because I think it's critical for the teachers and parents to under, and students too, because we have students that mentor other students and that's really important too. But let me just read it to you quickly and then I'll stop talking, okay? So the, and you can Google this, um, it is online, it's, it's nothing fancy, but it's really a great uh, poem. Um, it's called Heart Prints. So, I better put my glasses on, hold on a second, sorry. Whatever our hands touch, we leave fingerprints. On walls, on furniture, on doorknobs, dishes, books, there's no escaping it. As we touch, we leave our identity. Wherever I go today, help me leave heart prints. Heart prints of compassion, of understanding, and of love. Heart prints of kindness and genuine concern. May my heart touch a lonely neighbor, or a runaway daughter, or an anxious student, or perhaps an aged grandfather. Send me out today to leave heart prints. And if someone should say, I felt your touch today, may they also sense the love that is deep within my heart. So just think about that. When you're working with these kids, when you're working with your kids, Sometimes, you know, they're aggravating. But you're still leaving heart prints on them for the rest of their lives, and they're never gonna forget it. And I graduated a long time ago, and I remember this from the teacher that taught me for four years in my high school. So thank you. Well, I guess everything would come to an end sooner or later. Actually, I still have one more meeting, a short one, but my next meeting will be December 7th for a while until the new president gets elected. Uh, the only question I have is where is the organ organization meeting that's going to take place, uh, Mr. Newman? At the... Uh, what elementary school? Maplewood. Okay. Well, one thing you have to understand is where I stand. What the first, the very first thing that I, and it's in my heart, it's the survival and the future of the United States of America. Unfortunately, it's been attacked from all over the place, including in some people in this district. You have to understand where I come from. I'm not a Native American, no. I'm an import who came to America in 1958, two years after my father and half of the family, because those days, immigration laws were very important and then the administration made sure that every, every immigrant got, got through the inspections, medical inspections, support, of individual in this country to support the family temporarily. Something that's gone, an open border, an open border with some, with, with, with even we have a, 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 a board member that actually is trying to aid and abate all this illegal that came through Erie County and there's in Western Pennsylvania. The survival of America is a my priority. And how do we save the uh, future of America? It's through our kids, your kids, parents out there. Your kids have to be taught what America is all about. Not to hate America, but to love it and appreciate what, what it got, what you got. And you keep forgetting about it. Yes, we have, right now, we have too many people that they, their religion is not a Christianity, Muslims, or whatever. It's money. People want to make money. 
and they don't care if they, they, they want to pay for the money they want, is the people don't have any, but they have very little. Going back, the children are the future of this country, and they need to get the best education possible. We got to keep away the people that infiltrate the school, the schools, and try to teach the kids to hate America. They can do whatever they want to do. You can be whatever you want to be. Yes, I that agree too. You can be whatever you want to be. But you cannot change a knock of God. Never. When a knock of God happens. It happens, and nobody can change. Now, the act of God is a legal term for something that happens. It happens because it's a natural event. Period. Now, going back to the to the, to the, to the district and, and the future of the district. We do have finally achieved a new board. And I have to have to <clears throat> I have to get to a congratulation. Congratulate those who got elected. Allison Beers. Yes. Ryan Bennick, Tim Brown, Michael Sosi. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Brian Custer, Randy Staborski, and David Lareski. And that the key candidate for one election that I really appreciate that he got elected is Randy Staborski. Are you here, Randy? No, he couldn't make it tonight. Randy and I communicated years ago about civics. How do we teach American kids to know about the they have their own country and their own system is teach them civics, American civics. Unfortunately, I tried it out but did not succeed. So I hope that Randy, with the experience, can convince the new board that we need civics taught, American civics taught in this district. With kids, young Americans, that from kindergarten and up need to know how great this country is and opportunities that lie ahead for them. And I can tell you because I, among the millions of other immigrants, know what it was like living in a country that after you finish school, you got to know this individual, that individual, because if you don't know anybody in power, you never get a job. And you know, I never had any problems finding a job in this country because I didn't know anybody but they went by my credentials in my school. So the America is it, it's very important that we all stick together and make sure that we survive another 300 years and longer. It's the only country in the world has been stable for so many years, except that now, right now, we're under attack. Not only from outside, it's from internally. <coughs> what disturbs me most of is the division and hate that the extremist left when you manage to instill among Americans. The hate because of color, because of what you decide, your personal desires. Come on. We have to stick together to save the, the future of these children that are growing, that were born today, that were born yesterday. We have to save this nation, and this and the school is doing it. We have to do it, but we have to do it without having an individual that will try to brainwash them with a false doctrine to teach them that that America. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible nation because in the past somebody had slaves. That in the past because somebody did something wrong. But it was rectified through the ages. Everything was done right. And it's still doing all the time. 
because that's our system of our republic system allows us to do that. And something that we really never remember that the only thing democracy, civil liberty, that we call that democracy, that democracy, are written in the Republic Constitution, in the Constitution of our Republic, to the flag that we pledge allegiance tonight, and every meeting we, we, we attend. Do I have any regrets for being on the board? No. I spent 12 years on this board. The first 10 years, you know, I always, uh, I always was in the minority. And I abided by the parliamentary rules all the time. I never tried to bully myself, my views, to be on, on, on the board. I just went along and tried to be part of of the decision that was needed to be made. There are lots of events that are or will affect our district. All boards, present and future, will have to be aware of them and under and under a united front to work for the solution to only educate that only educate the district students and to not overburden the taxpayer of the district. I spoke to a lot of teachers during the election of elections and they, they, and they say, you know, you can't try to have been settled a long time ago if we, your unions have talked to you about it, they help benefits. The health benefits have to be paid by all and be fair to all. You know, like I said before, the poor people cannot afford to subsidize the rich people. <coughs> I'm not being specific, I'm just saying to compare. You can't have people that don't have enough money to pay for those who have a lot of money. Yeah, I don't sound like a Republican, I guess. <coughs> And again, finally, I'd like to welcome all the elected board members. Like I said before, Alison Beers, Ryan Bennett, Tim Brown, Michael Sorcy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Brian Kostler, Randy Skaborski, and David Oreski. I'm sure that all of you will continue to make, it, to make sure all our students will get the best education and dictate it is dictated by the Department of Education and protect all students from any harm. And that's all I have to say. Motion to adjourn. Motion. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <coughs> Second.